however, wherever you're watching this, this is uh, Digging Deeper. It's a little thing we do here at Tuck of Siege to kind of drop it on Wednesdays usually, a little hope for your hump day, a uh, little digging deeper into this past Sunday sermon. We are continuing our walk through the Gospel of John, and John 17 is a section of Scripture, this last chapter before we get into the Passion, that, that's called the High Priestly Prayer. And, it, and it's understanding that context, right? Jesus sets it off right at the bat. John like brings us right in that moment. He says, he says, you know, after he finished saying these things, he turns his eyes up to heaven and he says, right, Father, my hour, the hour has come. And we start to understand that's the context of everything that's coming on here. This prayer is in the, the context of Jesus is finishing this earthly ministry. The, the hour is now here. He's getting ready to be um, betrayed by Judas. He's getting ready to be arrested. Um, tried in a kangaroo court, beaten, uh, crucified, killed. The, the, the time had come, and, and, and it's coming to this end, and his last thoughts are still here with the glory of God, which was his purpose, right? And, and the, the men that God had given him, these disciples that he had, he's praying for them. He's praying for them to be watched over and that God would keep them and strengthen them after Christ has gone back into heaven the power of the Holy Spirit, and then he even prays for the believers who would come out of him. And so as we reach into and start looking at, at John 17, the context there, um, Sinclair Ferguson talks about this idea that the conversations in the upper room uh, give us a, that window into Christ's heart, that chapter 17 is like a stethoscope placed right on the Savior's chest and we can hear his heartbeat. We get to know him best when we hear him speak freely to the one that he loves most. And so we, we approach this chapter with a, a sense of worship and awe and a divine privilege to, to hear this prayer, right? Jesus, the eternal son of one substance, power, and eternity with the Father, having that conversation and going through all that. And, and the big takeaway as in all of Jesus' conversation that he's had with his disciples here in the upper room is this idea of, of a heart that's not troubled, of, of a confidence in God, a, a trust in Him. And, and at the end of chapter 16, he had been talking to his disciples about how they had uh, special access to the Father as children of God because they believe in Him and they believe in the one whom the Father sends. They are children of God as well. And so the way that they see and hear Him having this conversation with the Father is the same type of access that they would have as well. Uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, John's gospel doesn't record the Lord's Prayer, right? Which uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke record the Our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name. And that's, uh, I've heard some people call that the disciples' prayer because he's teaching them how to pray. This is actually, you know, possessive, the Lord's Prayer. He is praying this prayer. And so for us, it, it's not just a prayer, right? Just It's not just a kind of a pattern to follow, but it's a real example of how we should pray too and how we come to the Father and this type of uh, confidence that we can have when we come before God because He cares about us. He, he wants to hear from us. He wants to hear our prayers. And in the same way, we have this beautiful prayer in John 17. And we'll go through this over the next couple of weeks. You know, the first five verses here, Jesus is praying for His ministry. In the next few verses, He's praying for His disciples. In the last part, He's, he's praying for us, which is just an awesome thing, that, that the Son would pray for, for me way before you know I was ever even thought of, 2,000 years before I was ever even born. Jesus was thinking about me and praying about me and praying for all who would believe in him, for confidence and, 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 and hope in the Father. But in the same way, this is John 17, and I encourage you to go back and read this. It'll be real quick today. But I encourage you to go back and read it and just to think about what that is, that we have this confidence to go to the Father just like this. But bigger than that, Read the words of John 17 and, and think about the, the context that this is several, just a few hours away from being arrested and betrayed and arrested and then crucified. It's, it's, it's towards the end, and this is it. We were on his mind. Glorifying the Father was on his mind. His disciples, his friends there were, were on his mind because he cares about us. I think in this world today, we, we lose sight of that. that, that, that they, we think about Jesus and who he is and all the good stuff that he did, but we lose the fact or we lose the weight, rather, that Jesus loves us, that the Father loves us. It is that love that he has for us that, that he sent his son to die for us. And it's that same love that he cares for us, that he wants to hear from us, and he wants us to take us 
take care of it, our problems and our troubles and whatever it is that we're going through. And, and I think the emphasis here that we see in Jesus' life is that Jesus' life was one of obedience to the Father, of, of listening to the Father, of saying what the Father would have you to do, and a conversation with him, a, a prayer with the Father. And he's always having this conversation, this ongoing conversation, and talking to the Father. But here in 17, John 17, we have this beautiful just kind of, you know, big picture of, of, of the heart of Jesus. And we get to see um, his care uh, to the Father. Uh, but I think, too, importantly for us, that he cares about us. Because when you know how much somebody cares for you, it changes how you approach them. And so uh, think about when's the last time that you really had good prayer time with the Father because that's what that's what we're, we're called to do, right? We, we pray because we've been um, commanded to, but we pray because we want to talk to God. We spend time in, in God's Word. Now that's, it's, uh, that's how He talks to us, but then we, we pray and we talk to Him. We take Him, our, our, our prayers, our concerns, our, our worries, our troubles. We give Him thanksgiving. We, we, we cast our cares on Him because He cares about us. And so as we start to dig deeper into uh, Christ's prayer, this high priestly prayer, and understand more and more about what that is, I pray that we would start to develop a culture of prayer in our own lives. Because if we want to see real change in our lives, we want to see real change in the lives of those around us that's impacted by God, it starts with having that culture of prayer. And so with all that being said, let me pray for us as we get out of here. Hopefully, just a little quick thing so you Get out there, read John 17, right, and, and start your own uh, uh, culture of prayer. The best day to start praying is right now. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity that we have. I'm thankful for technology that we can shoot these videos and people can watch them during the week. We know a lot of people are traveling through the 4th of July. God, I pray that you would continue to watch over them and keep them safe. Be with those who are in, at work and wherever they are, however they're here in this, God. I pray through the power of your Holy Spirit that you would speak to them and work to them. And Lord, I just pray that you'd be with them, that they would know that you love them, and they can bring all those cares to you by faith and in Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So I hope you're having a good day, a great Wednesday. Hopefully it's posted on Wednesday. You get to see this, and uh, we'll see you Sunday. And uh, have a great day. Get in a pit. Try to love somebody.